Getting knocked down on the football field makes you tough. But getting back up makes you tougher. At Goodyear, we call that determination. A willingness to put in more hours, more reps, and more heart to reach a bar that's sky high. Because the Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear. More driven. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head the dirt. Yeah, I pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me a po 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 He is Jalen versus everybody. What up, dog? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. Center stage on the mic. And we're putting it on wax. It's the new stuff. We're Jalen and Jacoby. What is it that we do? Hold on. <laughs> Speaking of the hobbits, we're going to talk about LeBron James. What they want. You're taking a lot out of me screaming at the top of the show sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Rose. I'm so sorry. I know this is very difficult for you. I'm you haven't seen singers for you. I know this is hard for you. And their voices. Yeah, I know. And I know. they manage them. Yeah, they do. They go on tour and sing for three hours every single night. We ask you to sing for four seconds every day, and you complain about it for the next ten minutes. But for 250 times a year, times eight years, that add up. What? I just want everyone to know that if you're listening to this podcast. That sound you hear in the background is Jalen's sweater. Because <laughs> it is loud. <laughs> Reggie's going to have some trouble <laughs> EQing this one. You, Reggie, can you edit out the sound of Jalen's sweater? <laughs> no. People driving their cars are crashing. <laughs> Think there's a siren behind them pulling over on the side of the highway. Now that you got me thinking about it, I guess I would consider this a new era Coogee. What? It, it, it's fly, but I just I can't do it. You know what I mean? 40-year-old white dude can't wear it. It's very fly. You heard Biggie. Pink Gators. My Detroit players. We That's take right. it there. That's right. That's right. You saw I, me at the draft. I like it. I like it. I do like the sweater. I would tell you if I didn't like it. I know you would. I would tell you if I didn't like it, but I just can't wear it. <laughs> it's one of you'll the things. Look, you look cold in it. I got a couple items in the closet that are just, they're kind of like that. Like when I bought them, I was like, this is fly. This is the new me. And I just, when I put them on, I'm never like, wear them. I, I can't do that. <laughs> this is the, this is not the new me. So imagine, I have a couple of those too. I'm, I'm mad, I don't even know what those are. <laughs> That's like not me. A cocktail gown or something. Like I'm trying to tell everybody, y'all saw the red and white draft suit because I walked across the stage. Y'all didn't see the lime green draft suit I wore to the party. Oh, wow. What? You listen to Jalen Jacoby giving people what they want. <laughs> Always. This is, we need your help. We're talking to our podcast listeners, our family. Shout out. We need your help. We want cultural or regional voicemails. Call 985-80-JALEN and leave us cultural or regional questions. If you're listening to this podcast right now, you know exactly what cultural or regional means and you know the whole vibe. So leave us those voicemails. We're going to put them on the TV show tomorrow, Friday. So leave us voicemails, 985-80-JALEN, and we'll put them on the show right now. We're going to hit another voicemail. Yo, Jalen and Jacoby. It's Donovan calling from CT, representing 860. Uh, first of all, I got to shout out Reg. I heard that Monday pod. I appreciate the Mac Miller beats in the background. RIP Mac. Jalen, I need your update and your thoughts on power. Haven't heard from you about it. I need to know what you think. All right. Peace. See, one thing I know is Reggie picks the voicemails that he wants to hear the answers to. You know of course. I mean? That's, like we that's spend, what it's like yeah. to be in charge. We yeah. spend so much time working on the, the rundown people that you want. and picking the topics and what order. Is this going to the A block or the B block? Should we start with this? Should we flow from this topic to that topic? And Reggie does the same thing, but we just don't have any control over it. No question. No red tape. Yep. Whatever he wants on the show is going to be on the show. Exactly. So Jalen Donovan wants on the show. Shout out to the 860, by the way. A special place for both Jalen and I. <laughs> yes, indeed. Jay, he wants your thoughts on power. I think first I'm gonna say spoiler alert to everybody. If you haven't seen, if you're like me and you haven't seen the last episode, it's spoiler alert time. 
So just skip ahead for two minutes. Jalen, I want you to cook on your thoughts on the finale. Or the, next week's the finale. Finale happened. In this season of power. And so I know there are going to be a couple of people that still, A, want to watch it and or going to be binge watching all week. I've actually watched the most recent episode five times already. He's not lying either. Um, and a lot of three of those times I watched episode nine prior. Just to yeah, because you got to understand the no no question of everything that's no question. Down. I like to know names. I like to know everybody. So what are your thoughts? A couple of things. Ghost messed up. What do you do? Ghost in his own way felt like he was giving Tommy a heads up about going to meet with Angela. He didn't know that Tommy was going to show up and actually shoot Angela. And for people that have been following the show since day one, for AUSA to actually get shot is really surprising. Um, I'm shocked. When you said that word, because I haven't seen it, when you said that word, I was just like, "That wait, what? That's why I went there first. It's the same thing when Kanan died. But here's what I truly believe. She ain't dead. Oh, okay. She ain't dead. She's a cop. She's not going to say who did it. They probably sit her down for a little while based on what they're investigating her on and her relationships and whatnot, her collusion. But I do believe she's going to return. And I think while she's quote unquote healing from her wound, she's going to also be incarcerated. Oh, that's going to become a thing. Another thing that I think may become a thing is Tyreek is going to basically embrace the fact that Kanan's his dad. Mm -hmm. It's one thing for him to get killed and you go get a fake ID and you have the name on it. I peeped how they put when Kanan died, they put his picture of him and Sean, his son that he allegedly killed on the screen. And I noticed that Tyreek looked a lot like more Kanan, a lot like more Kanan than Sean did. Mm. So that jumped out at me. Um, Tommy's in a unique spot because he's back using drugs again. Oh, Tommy. I, I was disappointed. Thomas. I, I was disappointed. That's never, no one ever said, you know what? Getting back into drugs is really when my life turned around for the better. Yeah, but, but, but he took the relationship with Teresi really hard. As somebody that didn't have a father, I get it. Mm -hmm. He wanted it to work so bad. And the way you and your dad may go to a basketball game, him and his dad stabbing somebody in the living room is they were exactly bonding. the same. They were bonding. That, that's, that's quality <laughs> yeah, yeah, time. That is quality time. You know? <laughs> Family time. And, and then you find out that your dad basically got out because he let the feds know that he was going to give you up. You know, that, that that's a heavy blow. That's tough. You know, and, and yeah. you know Tommy's having it tough when two things happen. Number one, he's dealing with Keisha. Mm -hmm. And number two, he's loving on his mom. He was up laying in that bed. He was in a fetal position. He needed love from his mom. Everyone, everyone, you know, when, when things get really tough, I would either want to see a police officer or my mom. And so, like, a as these relationships continue to foster, you know, Tasha and Terry Silver, I think he now is going to be in position to lie for her. Mm-hmm. Um... It's going, it's going to be interesting, however, to see what's next. So I want to project a little bit. I think what kind of got untangled in the story is now Tommy and Ghost aren't about to be seeing eye to eye. That seems to be the next logical step. That's next. Because it was like, this season was like, oh, we're against Dre. We're, we're ganging up with Kane. And Kane was always a natural enemy. And then they got together. Now he's gone. So there needs to be some tension between some of those major male characters. And it seems like they're the only two left. And also, like, they continue to show how they don't trust one another. It's like when you're having a conversation with Tasha and then all of a sudden Tariq comes in the room and it's almost like you deserve that she slapped you. Little things like that. Or when it's like, oh, really? You're going to talk to us about trust. You're going to talk to us about honesty, Ghost, about being a family. Mm. You notice Tasha and Ghost. You, I'm sorry. You notice Tasha and Tommy continue to acknowledge to Ghost that he's not loyal to them. And when I say that, Tariq is 
going to be acknowledged as Kanan's son, you can't overstate the fact that that means that Tasha's his mom. Mm. How about that? Just think about this. You saw them in the hallway when she ran up on Kanan. Yep. That was, that exchange was awkward. And in the last episode, Go said, Oh, she wanted me to take care of Kanan. Why? So she can eliminate one of her enemies is what he said. I like so it. Tariq is going to be street. He's going to listen to Uncle Tommy, but Uncle Tommy's going to fall out with Ghost. So that's going to be the new triangle as Angela continues to heal from her wounds. You heard it here from Jalen Rose. <laughs> I think if we just, if, if, I know that. What you think about that, Kayla? I think that you're really good at breaking down NBA basketball. But if someone said to you, Jalen, I want you to leave ESPN and just talk about power the same way you talk about basketball, you'd consider it seriously. I will consider, consider it. it serious. I will consider it. So consider what are you going to do in the gap between this season? You know, there's not a new episode of Power for like a year and a half. You know That's that, easy. Right? That's easy. Okay. Start over. You're the best. Let's get the people <laughs> what they want. Getting knocked down on the football field makes you tough. But getting back up makes you tougher. At Goodyear, we call that determination. A willingness to put in more hours, more reps, and more heart to reach a bar that's sky high. Because the Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear. More driven. One thing that both you and I share, an opinion both you and I share about the upcoming NBA season is there's going to be a team that's going to exceed expectations. That's going to be good. It's going to surprise people a little bit. We think that team is going to be the Oklahoma City Thunder. But we've got some bad news for Thunder fans. Bad news for NBA fans. Bad news for humanity. Russell Westbrook had some soreness in his knee as we head into training camp. Individual workout getting ready for training camp. And he is now going under the knife. He's going to be reevaluated in four weeks. Jalen Rose, what does this mean for Russell, for the Thunder, for NBA fans? Overall, if he misses regular season games, it takes me from feeling like they're a top three or four team in the West to now six or seven. What if he misses like ten games? Right off top. That's why I went there because the West is so stacked. It's mm-hmm. so tough. Yeah. Three through eight last year was divided by a game and a half. Portland ended up winning the hot spot. Yep. So, if he misses regular season games, it's going to overall affect their playoff seating, no question. Yep. But the depth that they've added, the youth, the athleticism, bringing back Paul George, Steven Adams is going to have another year. Russell Westbrook led the league in touches, back-to-back triple-doubles, has a chance to do it three straight years. Robertson healthy. No question about it. I, I truly believe that Oklahoma City has what it takes to clearly advance in the playoffs and kind of shatter a glass ceiling that we have reserved only for the Golden State Warriors and the Houston Rockets in the West. I mean, the good news is this isn't a serious injury. You know what I mean? This, this isn't a torn ligaments and things. This seems to be like a little a little procedure, a little tune-up. Now, he, this isn't the first time he's gone under the knife. Let's take a look at his sort of history with this exact same knee. Right knee, right knee, right knee. If you can see, in 2013, that one calendar year, he had three different procedures, but he certainly bounced back from those. You know, that was a while ago, but no one looks at Russell Westbrook and say, oh, yeah, he's not the same since those surgeries because he is. So he's no stranger to this. And these procedures aren't like they used to be back in the day. Like, you know, the the medicine has advanced and people come back strong and healthy. Do you think that he will be, you know, on Christmas, he'll be midseason form ready to go? The most athletic point guard I've seen. And he clearly relies on his explosiveness, Mm -hmm. his ability to change ends of the floor with the best of them. So he clearly is going to be compromised early in the preseason. Hopefully for them, they get him back early as possible because as I initiated, I anticipate them advancing in the playoffs and having a really good year. Yeah, I do too. Um, moving on to a former teammate of Russell Westbrook's, James Harden. Now you and I had the honor of going to see some black ops basketball pro runs at this one gym at an undisclosed location in New York City. Chris Brickley runs some very serious, you know, summer runs. They're workouts, but they're also real games. This is footage of James Harden playing with his new teammate and former teammate of Russell Westbrook's, Carmelo Anthony. Now, this is just pickup, edited, we're going to see the buckets, but can it really help? 
Can't plan these runs with your new teammate, help understand anything, or do something for chemistry for the Rockets? Absolutely. If anybody has played pickup ball, when you run with somebody for the first time, you understand their tendencies, their strengths and weaknesses. And then if and when you play with them or against them, again, you understand what they are. Mm -hmm. That's the exact same thing that takes place in workouts or runs with high-level NBA players. James Harden was doing the moves he's going to do during the regular season. So I'm crossing up, crossing over back between the legs, <laughs> step back threes, which he led the league by a long shot the last couple of years. That's what he does. But if you Carmelo Anthony, what you now got to start to do is let him know, like, we're going to slow it down a little bit. <laughs> you notice Melo was at the elbow, yep. ISO. That's what he does. Face up. Mid post. Like, this is kind of what I'm going to want to do as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Without the coaches, without the fans, without front office personnel, so he can put it in James' head. So now out on the floor, forget what's being said by everybody else. If James believes he's going to be able to be mm -hmm. James highly the ball. functioning right there, he's going to give him the rock. Does Carmelo Anthony set picks for the Rockets? Yeah, you set a lot of picks because he's going to be playing a stretch four position. And anytime a big gets switched on to Chris Paul or James Harden, that's going to be lights out for that player. And so Melo has to do a better job of screening. Because he's not a great screener. Like, he do a lot of slips. I've watched a lot of Knicks games. <laughs> he do a lot of slips. He's on his tippy toes. He slides out of there really quick trying to get that jumper. But they close to him so fast, I think once he sets that pick, he'll create that action and get that elbow iso. Well, let me ask you a real question. As someone who played in the NBA for a very long time, I understand how playing in these pickup runs together can build chemistry. But does that build, which builds more chemistry? Playing a pickup together or the champagne and campaigning after the pickup run? The champagne and campaigning yes, after the run. Yeah, yeah, because when kidding. you're during pickup, there are a lot of people around that you mm -hmm. can't really say what you think. Yep. And also talk about your anticipation and your, and your goals. And your coach. And, and so Houston. now James and Carmelo can go have their favorite bottle of bubbly and say, yep. what's really going on yes. with such and yeah, such? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know they both they both have dealt with Mike D'Antoni a little bit. No, no doubt Carmelo's about it. Carmelo's got some complaints. No doubt about it. Like when when I had him in New York, yeah. like yeah. he mentioned the word defense and I was done with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you have him in Houston. Y'all one of the best defensive teams. Do, do he say defense yes. in y'all locker room? Yes. Like those type of things. But and also, it's like, James, I know you've got your – you're going to have your jersey hung in the rafters at Houston at one point, but you've already got your jersey hung in the rafters at a, a gentleman's place in Houston. So while we're in New York, let me show you some of my some of my places where I'm a regular. Right, I was born here. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know what I'm saying? I played here for a long time. You in my backyard. Let me show you a good time. Good. Well, also getting some chemistry, some new teammates. Dirk Nowitzki. You know, he's, Captain Dirk. he's on the, he's on the way out. His, his career is coming to a close, but his new two teammate, Luka Doncic, his career is just beginning. The two have played together and Dirk had some praise for the young Luka Doncic. Let's listen. At 19, I mean, I could, I could shoot a little bit, but I never had the, the, the court vision and the, the savviness and the, uh, the, the stuff that he brings to the game. And, uh, you know, just the way he already reads pick and roll. You go under, he shoots. If he goes, if the man goes over, he kind of keeps him uh, behind him like the best, like Chris Paul and these guys do. Coming off pick and rolls, find the shooters, uh, find the lob guys. Uh, he's he's going to pick some defenses apart, and it should be it should be fun to watch. Of course, you're going to you know talk well about the new rookie on the team, but what do you think about Dirk being so so just like really seems like he believes in this young man? He like we made the playoffs the last couple of years. I better be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First and foremost, like when you're an, an all time great player and we allow players and rightfully so who get drafted by a team and seem to chase opportunities with better teams for championships. Mm -hmm. I stand and salute players like Dirk and Damian Lillard who and, and Lamar and uh, Anthony Davis. Guys who got drafted by situations that we feel like they could go somewhere for greener pastures. Greek freak as well. But they stay. Yep. The problem is, like Kobe, for Dirk, they haven't built anything around them the last few years. Not the last few years. I mean, they had that championship team. It seemed like Mark Cuban, he, he tried, you know, brings in Parsons and things like that. But this isn't. But the commentary from Dirk, he truly believes it. He's never been one to only say things for the cameras and try to be phony about what he thinks about a player. And the assessment that he gave is accurate. This is why Luka Doncic was so high in the draft. 
his court court sense, his awareness, his ability to play under control with a pace. He's not the fastest guy, not the most athletic nope. guy. And so his ability to pass guys open is going to be something that the Mavs need. I think he and Dennis Smith Jr. are going to be a really nice young backcourt for them yep. to build around for a long time. I think so, too. Jalen Rose, it's time for News That Matters. We have some sad news today, Jalen Rose. <laughs> it's, it's about the state of our country and where collectively our heads are at. In Washington, D.C.? No. All over. There was a Harris poll that was done. And the question was asked to the people of this great nation. What is the best Mexican restaurant? The people answered Taco Bell. What? What's a Mexican Nathan? Jalen Rose. What? How could people think Taco Bell is the best Mexican restaurant that we have? You really surprised? You upset? You disappointed? I, I'm upset about I, this. I would think the other national choice in the conversation would probably be Chipotle. If I gave you the options of eating Chipotle food, which, while not the healthiest thing in the world, but it's quality, you know, higher quality than Taco Bell. I love me some Taco Bell. I do love me some Taco Bell. But you can't say that's the best Mexican food. It's a longstanding brand. You underestimate that, too. And that resonates with kids. A lot. It does. A level of familiarity. So, what's your Taco Bell order? My Taco Bell order, I learned to get a Mexi Melt. I like Mexi Melts. Extra sour cream. Oh. Or I get Which hard sauce? tacos. Which sauce are you going with? I do a little sauce. I go, I go fire sauce. Oh, I go the hottest thing they got. A little Victor Cruz. I'm kind of hungry for some Taco Bell right now. Ah. So, Jalen, you know I recently moved to New York City. And it's different than L.A. So much energy. You know, there's just so much going on. So many people walking in the streets and subways and cabs and honks and horns and ambulances. It's just the stimulation is everywhere. And there's just so much to do. So many live events to attend. Comedy clubs, Broadway shows, concerts, sporting events. There's just so much to pick from, which is why I use SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to get tickets for every type of live event. Whether you're searching for a last-minute deal or planning a night out months in advance with friends, SeatGeek helps you find the best seats, the best prices. And the best thing is it's all fully guaranteed. I have the SeatGeek app on my phone, and it's so easy to shop for tickets. Here's why. Because they've got this thing. You can easily pick what you want to do. And then once you pick the event that you want to go to, you can select your seats. And when you select your seats, it's simple. Green seats. Good deal. Red seats. Not a good deal. And what SeatGeek does is they search all of the ticket sites. So you don't have to use another one. You get a one-stop shop with the SeatGeek app when you have the SeatGeek app on your phone. Every ticket that you get is fully guaranteed. You know you're going to get a good deal because they make it so easy to find the best deals. And here's the thing. Our listeners get $20 off their first SeatGeek purchase. Just download the SeatGeek app on your phone and enter the promo code JACOBY today. Promo code Jacoby, J-A-C-O-B-Y, and you get $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. I use SeatGeek for real, for real, in real life. You should, too. Download the SeatGeek app and use the promo code Jacoby. Jalen Rose, Des Bryant's been in the news. He's not playing football professionally for any team right now, but he live-tweeted the Cowboys game. He basically said the Cowboys would have won if him and Dan Bailey were there, and they lost, and they did not look good. They looked like they could have used some devs, to be honest with you. Yep. And you know who makes all the decisions in Dallas? Jerry Jones. So, let's take a look at this interesting picture. This is a photo of Des Bryant and Jerry Jones in Jerry World at... The Beyonce and Jay-Z concert. What? I have a lot of questions, Jalen Rose. A lot of questions. But first, I'll start with the obvious one. Is this an indication that potentially Des Bryant will be back in a cowboy uniform? It's an indication that Des didn't realize he'd be unemployed at this point of the year. <laughs> yep. Jerry Jones did not realize it either. He sees what Des is saying about the organization mm -hmm. and the lack of respect and the trust that he felt like the coaches had for him. Yep. Which is an extension of Jerry, who's also the GM and probably the maintenance man for yeah. the Cowboys. He does as everything well. for the Cowboys. He's going to make sure that his name has all of the titles. Yep. And so there's a level of responsibility that comes when they decide to release a player that was there multiple years and not offer him a different 
contract structure. Yeah, they, apparently they didn't offer him to sign at a discount either. And it's not like that that was news to Jerry. No one called Jerry and broke that news to him. He was involved in the decision-making process. And so that's the part of the relationship you see at the J&B concert where we kind of need each other right now. Oh. And do you think he signs at a discount? No. No. He don't get, they don't want him. They don't want him. No, they don't want him. So isn't that a little awkward? Like he's no. getting on a plane and going to Dallas and sitting there for the concert. That's a that, long concert. That, that's why I'm saying that's this three to you. hours. That's what I mean by they need each other. Pretty sure he didn't have to fly anywhere. Emotionally, he didn't have to fly anywhere. They sent the plane to him. No, he's there. He's there because he's unemployed right now. That's where he's lived for the last five or so years. Why does Jerry need Dez just to complain about everybody else? Public relations. You have a player that's a former member of your team. This. Out here spitting venom about how his relationship went with the team. So you think after a few adult beverages, after, you know, after a few songs, a couple hours, it, he says, you know what? Let's talk about something, Des. But when you go on Twitter and you start talking about the coaches and the team, that's not good for my business. In Jerry's head, after this meeting, he won't bash us anymore. Mm. In Des' head, after this meeting, teams won't feel like they can't add me to their team because I'm going to be a distraction anymore. Yep. The problem is you can't put that toothpaste back in the bottle. The Cowboys already released him, didn't offer him a discount. He's already had Twitter fingers about the organization. He already met with Cleveland. Nothing surfaced. Marcus Lee already got hurt with the Jaguars. They didn't ask him. Yep. The Patriots done did 20 transactions for receivers. They, they're, they're they didn't shopping want for them. receivers. And he tweeted about going to Washington and they came out quick and said they didn't want him. Mm. So I think now, unless there's a catastrophic industry inj- injury that takes place, he won't find a team this year. Wow. So can I get to the important questions about this event? Let's look at the picture again, right? If you see the people in the background, they're dancing, enjoying it. Do you think they sat for the entire time? Do you think Jerry Jones knows any Beyonce or Jay-Z lyrics? <laughs> Do you think Jerry Jones danced? Like I, if I was at a concert, if I was at a J&B concert, I could not sit there politely the entire time. You're sitting there with a guy worth billions mm-hmm. that could decide right now that we're going to sign you. So I'm pretty sure that Dez wasn't drinking. <laughs> if probably, he does. He's probably like, water, I'll take a water. Not saying that he does. Take a water. But I'm just saying how you behave in those situations. Yes, yeah, yeah, he's in a job interview. It's water. A job interview. Lime. Yeah. <laughs> eating healthy. No, no, I don't want none of them wings. You got any salad? Yeah. <laughs> Dip kale. Uh, you know what I'm Kale, kale and exactly. goat cheese, please. Order no, healthy. on the side, please. He's saying please and thank you for yeah. everything. Being a nice sign Somebody, autograph. Somebody walked past and they five uh, m- aisles away. Like, excuse me, excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> My bad. And so, like, in all honesty, I think that's what makes this important because it's a relationship business. He was really productive there for a really long time. Long time. He earned the respect of the fans. He earned the respect of the organization. And if J&B are in concert and he got Jerry on the phone, p- players should be able to hit him up and be like, I want to come watch the show. It don't cost him anything. I'm surprised that no one picked him up. You know what I mean? I'm surprised because I've, I've had him on my fantasy team, so I pay attention to his production. It's certainly not the deep threat he used to be, but he's a red zone threat. Like, he can get you touchdowns. Like, he can he can run the fade, throw him a jump ball. Like, he's got value. Do you think that his on-field production is why he's not, you know, currently employed or some of the off-field stuff that's been part of his history? I think uh the off-field allegations about his personality with the team have hindered him getting a job. I don't mm-hmm. think him going on yeah. social media helps – Either, but when I see the Raiders now bring back Martavius Bryant after they struggled in their first game, mm-hmm. I'm looking at um a possible job for Dez in Detroit because the last time I checked, Matthew Stafford threw four, and he's a 10 year veteran. Seems like we can le- use another threat out there as well. I like you putting that in the area. How many wins do you think the Lions get this year? Just say it. too early wax. to determine. <laughs> That's not what you said off wax. <laughs> One thing you said on wax was that Aaron Rodgers will not play against playing. the Vikings. You so you sometimes you just you just know things. Sometimes you have information, but sometimes you just feel it. And this is one of those ones that you just feel. He ain't playing. You sure? I'm, I'm fa- by the way, fantasy owners aren't, aren't happy hearing this. So listen, so you can listen to Jalen Rose about this topic, or you can listen to Aaron Rodgers. Let's listen to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I mean, I want to play, obviously, but uh, you know, just taking it one day at a time, see how it feels uh, tomorrow, and you know, see how it feels Friday and Saturday, <laughs> and then hopefully you're ready to go Sunday. He's smiling when he answers the question. He seems upbeat. He said it's a sprain. Why are you so sure he's not playing? They continue to change rules. So that the quarterback can stay healthy. Mm-hmm. You can't fall on the quarterback. You can't land on the quarterback. And, and by the way, as somebody who 
played defensive end until he got to high school, that's the move all day. Of course. When you sack him, you hold their elbow, make him fall on that shoulder, hope to injure him. Like, that's a part of the game. But with that being said, as they continue to modify the rules, is to create a level of longevity for the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And when you see Tom Brady at 41 and Drew Brees at 40 still performing, why put Aaron Rodgers out there week two versus the Minnesota Vikings, a team that are just as good, if not better, than you? Their defense is stout. They injured him last year. And their head coach, Wink Wink, came out in an interview and said, we anticipate he's going to play. And here's the subliminal that everybody got a key key from. I heard this too. But it was not a key key moment. He was like, oh, since he walks on water, what that means when you're in the other locker room, oh, that we wish they would put him out there. Oh. And think they're going to allow him to stay in the pocket and be a a lame duck for us to tee off on. We know since 2014 he's led the league in touchdown passes outside of the pocket. And we know he picked apart the Bears in the fourth quarter. You didn't come back against because that, of that Bears reason. defense, but we got a different but defense we got a week in Minnesota. To pre- and we got yeah. a week to prepare. Yeah, yeah. So if he ain't, we know he ain't going to be scrambling, which means we're going to be putting pressure right up the gut. I will not see Aaron Rodgers play football this weekend. You got to make sure that guy's 150% healthy. Before you put him back on. You mentioned Tom Brady. Tom Brady seems like he plays in the Super Bowl every single year. And Tom Brady and the Patriots beat the Jaguars in the AFC Championship game last year. Head coach of the Jaguars, though, had something very interesting to say. And I was shocked by this. He says that he does not watch the Super Bowl. Because he is so upset that him and his team is not in it that he doesn't even watch it. I think that he's lying. I think he's just trying to create a mystique. Do you think that he really doesn't watch the Super Bowl? A lot of this is imagery. And when you do this for a living, in particular work in the sports business, or coach or play, or a part of front office personnel or ownership, you're inundated by clips even if you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. They're on in the facility because the TV always on. You're watching sports and you're watching highlights. Unless he never looks at a television, never looks at a phone in life, over the last 25 years, he's clearly seen some Everybody of the Super Bowl. Everybody watches the Super Bowl. My wife watches the Super Bowl, and I, I don't think she can name two NFL players. Now, I understand the premise of what he's saying, though. Yes. I want to enjoy the Super Bowl when my team is participating. Since it has not happened, I'm not sitting down and acting like it's the biggest game of the year. I'm hosting yeah, I'm not a party, a yeah, tailgate yeah. party so we can enjoy 60 minutes of football that my team isn't playing. I get that, but at the same time, you can't tell me that when they start to study for the Patriots, some of the clips from the Super Bowl, Super Bowl ain't gonna be in there. The last game that That's they played. That's the last time they played. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. That 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 almost curtails your opportunity to do your job at um, a maximum level. Yeah, he watches Super Bowl, but this is one of my favorite parts. Everyone focusing on him not watching the Super Bowl. This is my favorite part. He said, "Quote about the last time he watched it." Probably when I wasn't coaching and I was allowed to gamble. Probably when I was like 12 when I had a little money on it. He was gambling on football when he was 12? So a guy that gambling was... Gambling on football when he was 12? First off, a guy that was gambling at 12 on football, which clearly became his profession, something he studied and read and sacrificed for. Maybe the reason why he doesn't want to watch it is because he don't want to... money on it. <laughs> he don't want to put no bread on it. <laughs> if I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet on I'm my team. Yes, he yes. roll style. <laughs> Allegedly. I, I love that he's 12 years old, like, you know, gets allowance, does some chores, gets like a dollar fifty, goes to goes to sixth grade and is like, yo, Steve, who you got? Right, but I, but I can't front. At 12 years old, I was betting on on everything really shooting craps playing blackjack playing you know, tunk playing it, spades it happens all the time because playing we, basketball we spend so much time together and we are such good friends but sometimes i just realize that we have very very different upbringings i was not i was not playing tunk whatever that is or, or rolling dice when i was 12 you years weren't old. no seriously i wasn't wow no that's not what we do in are you drinking 40 ounces nah, a few years later <laughs> Ow, ow. Yep, you guessed it. I'm a speed bump. So I've got one job. I slow you down. So imagine how I feel about Geico, who does way more. Like, not only could they save you money on car insurance, but they've been around for over 75 years, giving people fast and friendly claim service. Ow, ow. Plus, they got a nifty mobile app that gives you 24-7 access. Ow, ow. 
Just doing my job, buddy. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Jalen Rose, me and you both play very close attention to sports and the world of sports media, and not all topics are worth discussing. So, yeah, people force a lot of topics. So we've got a segment called Keep It Moving. We be moving, you know, we keep it moving. <laughs> all right. If you want to discuss it, you say hit the brakes and we'll break it down. If you want to keep it moving, me, you, and Method Man, just keep it moving. Are you ready? Let's get it. Bills head coach Sean McDermott has an update on who's going to start under center this week. Please hit the brakes. Let's listen to the head coach. Is it going to be Nathan Peterman? I don't, I don't feel a need, honestly, to elaborate. That's, you know, we, we talk a lot in house about decisions and things and what we've got to do and, and the right move at the right time. And, and right now, Sal, this, with all respect to your question, this is the right move for us. He's talking about, you'll never believe this, not starting Nathan Peterman. He's talking about going with the high draft pick, Josh Allen, under center. What? This has been a very curious move for McDermott and the Bills. Because Peterman, if you remember, threw five interceptions in the first half of a game last year. Threw a ton of interceptions last week. And it just seemed like, well, of course you're going to start Allen. So what do you think about him making this move this early in the season? First and foremost, Colin Kaepernick currently has a collusion case against the NFL. I'm walking into court. With Nathan Peterman's contract and stats. Yeah. You could probably bring Nathan Peterman because he'll be unemployed soon. Correct. <laughs> he can like, testify. Seriously, that, 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 that speaks for itself. For the Buffalo Bills, they've botched this entire yes, process. This wasn't the plan. They made the playoffs last year. This wasn't the plan. With Tyrod Taylor. Okay. They didn't want to pay him big bucks. That's your choice. That's you bring in AJ McCarron. You trade him in the offseason. You move up to get Josh Allen. You put him in the game when you're trailing by 40 in week one. Who's ever done that before? And then you depress your football team Mm -hmm. by trotting Peterman out there at any time. So for the way they've handled this, this ain't the right choice for the team. It's the only choice. That's why he said it 14 times. We only showed it once. He said this is the right thing for the team 14 times. If you're the Buffalo Bills, you know, they have not had a lot of success as a franchise. And they looked pretty good in spots last year. Like you said, they made the playoffs, lost to the Jaguars. But you're in the offseason, you're looking around thinking, all right, we made the playoffs last year. We're pretty good. You know, we look good in practice. Things are going pretty well. And that Ravens game, wow. Just wow. Well, everybody looks good in practice. That's what I'm saying. But you're feeling good about yourself as a franchise. You're, you're on the uptick. We're trending well. We didn't make the playoffs. We made the playoffs. Now we're going to take the next step. Everything's going to be great. Every team is in the off season. All 32 feel like this is going mm-hmm. to be the year. Of course. And so for Buffalo to have that performance in the first week, you have to now literally rejuvenate not only your locker room, but your fan base to show that I can actually build a young starting quarterback and turn them into a functioning member of the NFL. Moving on, Ben Roethlisberger has an update on whether or not he is going to play this He'll Sunday. play. He'll play. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Keep it moving. Okay. Jalen be moving. Uh, Jacoby moving. You know we keep it moving. Uh. <laughs> Triple G said that he saw injection marks all over Canelo's body before their last fight. Keep it moving hit or hit the brakes. The break. Well, word of this accusation of injection marks all over Canelo's body before this first fight got to Canelo and he responded. And I love it. It's poetic. Here is what Canelo said about that accusation. Quote, those are the kicks and screams of someone who is drowning. Those are the excuses that they are making because of what is coming on Saturday, which is a loss for them. Strong words. I love kicks and screams of a man who is drowning. I'm going to plagiarize that. Canelo hasn't lost a fight since 2013 against Floyd. I was actually there and disappointed in his performance as a young fighter. Mm Mm-hmm. De La Hoya has done a terrific job of bringing him along slowly, so to speak, and really carefully and meticulously picking opponents. And then all of a sudden he get a major opponent in Triple G, and there's doping allegations that get blamed on the level of beef that he was eating in his hometown. There's a positive test, not just allegations. And then there's a positive test as well. So where there's smoke, there's fire. You don't normally just make up things like that because when you say – 
there were injection marks. These are physical things that others can also see. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I'm just blindfolded. I don't know what an injection mark this. would look like, to be honest with you. I don't really know what that is, to be honest with you. But Holes. Sure. That's what it looks Triple like. Triple G's just, he's, you know, it's before a fight. He's just popping off. And so going into this fight, here's here's what's going to take place. Oh, you know what's going to take place? I do. Oh. While Canelo's eight years younger and he has the slight advantage in reach, I just think the power and the persistency of Canelo is going to be too much. Attacking his body, which he's really good at doing. Canelo or Triple G? Triple G. This is all Triple G. Triple G is going to do a great job of – um, um, body shots mm-hmm. and keeping them close. I think he's going to do a great job of jabbing towards the forehead to open up his gloves. He's going to keep putting pressure on him like he did in the first fight where he basically threw almost 200 more punches, landed almost 50 more. Yep. And when you're in with somebody, and I've actually sparred against Joe the Future, who was a former heavyweight champion. And being a heavyweight, I'm standing in there with him and I felt helpless because it didn't matter how much I hit him or how hard he, I knew he didn't feel it. <laughs> and he would tell me that if you don't hit me, I'm going to hit you. So every time now and then he hit me with a body shot or hit me in a chest or something and it actually hurts. So for Triple G, I can tell with the level of aggressiveness, if you punching somebody and they're roided up, you can feel it, and you're not going to take the chances that you normally would. I don't think that's going to be the case this time around, and Triple G scores a knockout in the eighth round. Triple G knockout in the eighth, eighth round. You heard it here on Jalen and Jacoby. We'll, we'll check in on that on Monday. We'll see how that goes. That's what I do. I think Triple G is going to win. I'm not sure it's going to be a knockout. Next, Hugh Freeze thinks that he is not coaching in college football because of the, quote, climate in America. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. He's shown to be a really good coach, but keep it moving. Okay. We keep it moving. He don't have a team next to his name right now. Drew Brees says that Baker Mayfield can be better than him. Either they have the same agent, they're from the same hometown, they have something in common besides their height. Keep it moving. Okay. Jalen been moving up. Jacoby moving. You know we keep it moving up. There are There is news that the Timber Bulls are not pursuing Joe Kim Noah. They should be. Keep it moving. We keep it moving. They might as well. We keep it moving. I might try to run. I play for the Bulls. (laughs) That's a good point. A gentleman had a marriage proposal hidden in a video game. Keep it moving or hit the brakes? Hit the brakes. Okay. A guy by the name of Tyler Schultz had a girlfriend named Maddie, and he wanted to marry Maddie. So he reached out to Insomniac Games, the maker of the brand new Spider-Man video game. Very popular video game. I don't really play video games that aren't Golden Tee, but it's very popular. People like it, right? So in that video game on a theater marquee, the people of Insomniac Games said, all right, Tyler Schultz, since you hollered, we'll take care of you. They put, Maddie, will you marry me in the video game? Number one, corny way to propose to somebody. But they went ahead and did it, right? Well, guess what? Maddie broke up with Tyler. Got with Tyler's brother. Stop it right now. Real talk, this happened. So, a couple of things. How are you going to get with your ex's number, brother? Number one. How are your brother going to do that to a brother? First off, his brother's foul. This is broken. This is what I want to teach everyone. What's going everyone. on the Schultz This family? is what I want to teach everyone. Okay, teach teach everyone. If you're in a relationship with somebody and y'all break up and they end up dating somebody else that y'all know, that means they've been scheming. Oh, yeah. Or checking each other out. Oh, yeah. Or flirting a little bit. Oh, yeah. Or talking bad about you. I know. Talking about things they don't like in the relationship. That's what makes that transition easier, and that's number one. Number two, my brother not going to be like Nino Brown and G-Money after this. Mm-hmm. We ain't seeing eye no, to eye. No, I'm going to have to take no, him to no, the no, roof. Thanksgiving's going to get real awkward. No doubt about well, it. Well, here, can I kind of spin the story positive? And number three, like, how you get buried in a video game? Well, you'd be playing the video game, push pause, and look at your girlfriend and be like, look, honey, get down on one knee. That's cool. That's worse than doing it in the Jumbotron. And, and number three to her, we know you want to be a part of the family, but that ain't how you that do it. That ain't how you do it. Well, the good news do. is this, that someone else had a girlfriend named Maddie, and they got married that way or got engaged that way. Jalen, you know I recently moved to New York City, right? The Big Apple, city that never sleeps. Love my apartment. Love it so much. Space for the kids. Never thought that would be a thing in New York. There's one thing I don't love about my apartment. Actually, a couple things. First, we had mice. It's like, yo, I'm paying too much money to have mice in here. This is Anywhere no, no, no. in New York City, no. you're going to have mice. I'm like, I got mice. But we killed the mice. They're gone for They're gone for the time being. They'll be back. I know that. But they're gone for the time being. Another thing I can't fix is when someone rings the doorbell, 
It plays Wish You a Merry Christmas in my living room. I don't know why. It's not Christmas season. <laughs> I can't change that setting. So imagine you're sitting on the couch and Wish You a Merry Christmas starts playing. That means someone's at my door. However, with the ring, I know exactly who's at my door. You know about Ring. Someone rings the doorbell. You just look at your phone and you can see that person. You can speak to that person. You know if it's a package delivery. You know it's a friend dropping by. You know if someone maybe just checking to see if you're home so they can break in. With Ring, you are safe. You can, and not just while you're sitting in your own living room. Anywhere in the world, I, I can use see who's it at my consistently. Door. Really? Love it so very much. No front. So you could tell if someone rings your doorbell right now. Right now, I, I get a lot of packages. Gives you notifications. I have different reasons for people to show up at my residence. Mm-hmm. And I promise you, I'm constantly looking down at my phone, talking to them, looking at them, and acknowledging them at my front door. It's so nice. It's HD video, and there's two-way audio. You can see who is at your door. It gives you a calming feeling when you're away. I've got family. I've got kids in the house. My wife is in the house. I know what's going on. I know who's coming in and out of the house. I can see if packages are delivered or anything. And here's the thing. If you listen to J&J, they have a special offer for a ring starter kit, and it's available right now. You get a video doorbell, a motion-activated floodlight cam. The starter kit has everything you need to start building a ring of security around your home. All you got to do is go to ring.com slash J and J. That's ring.com slash J A N D J and start to feel more safe about where you live. Ring.com slash J A N D J. Jalen Rose, I have some very important information. You know, Fathead, those big Fathead things you put on the wall. Well, for some reason, that company decided to do a poll, to do a study, just to get inside the mind of sports fans and relay that information to us. And they uncovered some very interesting information. This study showed that one in five sports fans has turned down sex in favor of watching a game. Jalen, do you think that this is accurate information from Fathead? The reason why it's accurate information, yes, is the answer, is because in those situations of those 2,000 people, so one of five, was that 200? Mm Mm-hmm. All of those 200 people. 400. 400. Those 400 people live with their mate. Or oh, yeah. Married. They're married. That's all it is. But let me let me just. Here's one thing. Because, newly, us, because, because newlyweds on down in a relationship. Like, y'all don't live together. Yep. Y'all just dating. Y'all just met. Not turning that down. Y'all ain't turning it down. Well, here's, where, here's where my mind went. How long does sex take for everybody else? Because, yo, we can get it in a commercial break. You know what I mean? Like, like it's a three-hour football game. There's half times. There's in between the quarters. Like, we don't need. It. We can just postpone this. We don't, we don't have to turn it down. That, that's my point. That's you're you're, you're making you're making my point. Yeah, because there are points, I guess, at in a relationship where it takes longer to, um, I guess, get enthusiastic and to con- have completion. You know of the task. You know when uh, at hand. Remember that we're on in the afternoon then now, and then all the executives have the TV on with the sound off. They saw the topic bar on the bottom of this, and they turned the sound on. So we got to move on. We got we got to move on. You remember the Raiders got waxed, but it need to take longer than two minutes. Let's move on. The Raiders got waxed by the Rams, and John Gruden is his big debut. You know, with, without Khalil Mack, things weren't going great for the Raiders. Well, Amari Cooper really didn't produce that much. And John Gruden was asked about Amari Cooper's production, and here's what he said. Quote, You look at the film. We had him open, wide open, deep. We didn't go there. He was open a couple times, and for whatever reason, we didn't go that route. Now, people are reading this as John Gruden kind of throwing his quarterback's decision-making under the bus. We all know that John Gruden is a quarterback guru. Do you read this as John Gruden, you know, sort of throwing a car under the bus a little bit? This is when keeping it honest goes wrong. I don't mm-hmm. think he should have handled it this way. He did a terrific job working in the media. The team gave him a solidified deal of $100 million that he can work towards in order to be the face of the franchise. So much so, that money doesn't work against the salary cap. We know he had a pre-existing relationship with Al Davis's now son who runs the club. Mm-hmm. Because you do that. When you're in those meetings, guess what you're deciding? If y'all gonna pay Khalil Mack or not. Yeah. Y'all deciding that right there. Yes. He's a future Hall of Fame player. Y'all making that choice. And you know how, you know what the price tag is gonna be on one of the best defensive players. And not only did they let him go, 
They let another productive player that people don't talk about go. Michael Crabtree. Mm-hmm. He was always a guy seeing that they get got open for a car in the red zone in particular. Mm-hmm. So you lose both of those guys. Jordy Nelson has gotten older. He didn't target Amari or the receivers but five times. However, Jared Cook did get off. Yes. Tight end, nine catches, 180 yards. The other team has Aqib Tlaib and Marcus Peters, who got a pick six. So sometimes a quarterback can be gunshot based on the D-backs that he's going against. But you do yourself no service when you come out publicly and say he was open and I don't know why we didn't find him. Because now we're looking at you, offensive guru. Yep. We're looking at your offensive coordinator. And guess what we're going to be looking at next game? If Amari's open and Carr does or does not hit. And John Gruden's putting himself in a position where he has to explain his comments to Carr. And that's not good early in a relationship. You know what I mean? Because they're going to see each other. John's going to say, look, the media's taking something out of context and running with it. But you know Carr's telling his best friend, like, come on. How's my coach going to throw me under the bus? You know why I couldn't find him deep? Because I was getting tackled. And Carr, who also has a $100 million deal, who's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why John Gruden actually took the job. Other than the money, obviously. Well... We've got like an interesting sneaky news in the NBA that not too many people are talking about, but I find it interesting. A. Sherrod Blakely was on the Bulls Talk podcast, and he was asked about Kyrie Irving and his future with the Celtics, something that you talk about when you're in Boston, and here's what he had to say. I can tell you right now, the New York Knicks, he is their number one target. I've, I've spoken with people within that organization. They have made it absolutely crystal clear to me that – if they had their pick of guys that are going to be in the free agent market this summer, Kyrie would be their first, second, third, and fourth choice if they had <laughs> yeah. to make it. Their first, second, third, and fourth choice. Jalen, let's just say percentage out of 100. What percent chance do the Knicks have of having Kyrie Irving in a Knickerbocker uniform next year? Please. I learned to do this now in professional sports and really take the totality of every relationship in play. Whoa. And my answer is solely based on the fact that the Boston Celtics have as many assets outside of the Golden State Warriors as any team in the league. Facts. And I'm talking about players that can perform. Draft picks. Jalen Brown, Tatum, Smart, Terry Rozier. Horford. Up front, you got Morris, Horford. Like, they're stacked. Mm -hmm. Gordon Hayward's going to return. And you mentioned the plethora of picks that they have at their disposal. You have to decide, however, if you give Kyrie a max deal to now lose a couple of those picks. Yeah, yeah. And so I think keeping each one of those guys happy this year is going to be the deciding factor to whether Kyrie gets a long-term max deal with them. And look no further than Jason Tatum who I appreciate his attitude and his team first spirit. You know you're deep when a guy that just averaged 20 plus points in the playoffs his first year comes out and says, well, if I have, if I'm asked to come off the bench, I'll do it. Yeah. That, that means he understands that there are going to be a lot of miles to feed. So what percent chance do the Knicks have of landing Kyrie? Come on. You know, I'm a die easy Knicks fan. 45%. Oh, higher than I thought. I'll take that. I'll take those odds. Yeah. So Jalen Rose. We're going cultural or regional on the TV show tomorrow, so we need people to call in 985-80-Jalen, leave their cultural or regional questions, or you can hit us on Twitter, which is at Jalen Jacoby. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. Follow me! Jalen and Jacoby show account. Shout out to Kayla. Kayla Johnson, Johnson who's helping us out. with the social. Make sure y'all add her, follow her on IG and Twitter, too. She's the best social person and also a good friend. She sits next to me. And you sit next to me. I know. But you use my desk. I noticed that. I know. You use because trash. you're coming in earlier now. You leave trash on my desk. I was doing that for you months. Leave you leave trash here, on my desk. Anyone, see, this? you don't have to work in sports media to, to appreciate this. When you've got a desk and you keep it nice and organized the way I do, you know when someone else's trash is on there. You know when someone else left, and wait for it, left their food on your desk. Jalen Rose is guilty of leaving food on my desk. That is a violation of friendship and professional code. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, I need to defend myself. No, you need to apologize. I'm like Serena. You owe me an apology. I got a daughter. I got a daughter. (laughs) I got two daughters. You owe me an apology. I would say this. What's that? I gauged the time that you were going to come. And I felt like... 
I will clean it up before you arrived. You felt like you were going to so clean like, it up. So like, I, I, I need space to put like my hard boiled eggs and my mail along with my notes and my backpack, all of the things I bring in the morning. And your space is a nice handy spot. It's this my space, right dog. next to mine. It's my space. It's ours. Like Debo. I didn't hear you say both of ours. I didn't hear you say what? Anything that sounded like an apology. It sounded like an explanation. Because I, it, it should be clean by the time you arrive. And if I apologize, that means I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you hate when people give those apologies and oh. you know it ain't real? Oh, yeah. Empty, I'm all about empty apologies. <laughs> I'm not like the chair umpire. I'll be like, sorry, Serena. Can we, can we play tennis now? And like, how about the that? umpires act like they want to get together and boycott now? Sit down. They're not be gonna, home. They're not going to do it. They're, they're just talking. They're just talking. Live at the pod. Jalen and Jacoby, eight years running. We grew from being a podcast to a two-hour radio show. To a late night 30 minute television show. To an afternoon 30 minute television show at 3 p.m. And now we graduated. We graduated. Now we're one hour, Monday to Friday on ESPN 2 at 2. Make sure you check us out. Also, make sure you leave us a voicemail on 98580 Jalen. We're doing Cultural Regional tomorrow on the show and we're taking voicemails like this one. Hey, what's up, guys? It's easy to profit. So I was just listening to the pod, and y'all were talking about the guy who got fined for, for, uh, I guess kicking. I wouldn't consider it kicking, shoving, shoving the seagull. And I had a similar experience. So I was born in California, and I live in Texas now. We always go back there for vacations, and so about two years ago we had went. This is the first time we had been back in like four or five years. And so I'm with my family, went to the Santa Monica Pier. You know, we're just hanging out, taking in the sun. So, you know, I got my parents with me and my mom brings out a, you know, she brings out a lunch box and all that, or sack, whatever you want to call it. And she has sandwiches, you know, not just like basic, uh, two breads. She's in the middle, you know, like the actual subways, you know, she had them. They're like six. They're kind of cut in half, you know, but they're half foot long, or whatever, six inches. And so she has them all decked out, and I'm I'm pretty excited, you know. We're getting a little hungry. We're out in the sun, you know. And so I'm uh I'm standing up with my sandwich, and I'm eating it and showing my nephew how to get water out of his ear. And so I the I was I was kind of had my head tilted, banging my head with my other hand, kind of showing them how to do it. And somehow I had my soap sandwich up in the air, and the seagull comes flying down and just took it. Man, I was heated. I didn't know what happened. I just saw the seagull come, like, quick in the blink of an eye. I didn't even realize my sandwich was gone until, like, five seconds after I processed that a seagull almost killed me. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that guy shouldn't be fine. Uh, seagulls are basically air rats, so he 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 had on all, all the right in the world to kick that that thing is all I'm saying. But anyway, shout out to y'all, shout out Harley and Pete, especially Reg. Easy to profit. I got some things to say. First of all, he was also victimized by a seagull, and these seagulls they do deserve to be kicked. They do. If you steal something from me, there's repercussions. You can't just random act of violence kick a seagull for no reason but if you've got just cause i feel like you should be able to kick a seagull without being punished for it Three. secondly reggie you gotta edit these voicemails man that was way too long that was an essay jalen jalen got bored jalen got bored and fell asleep jalen jalen started talking to other people that was an during essay. the voicemail easy the profit also one thing i gotta say about easy the profit you know what button i'm about to push reggie just push the button don't act like you don't know which one's coming yep medicinal <laughs> Reggie, you're the best. <laughs> yep, medicinal. Listen, seagulls are out here stealing food. Seagulls are out here stealing food. And it, apparently, according to Easy to Profit and that guy in New Hampshire, at a breakneck pace. And this is something that we need to look into as a society. You know, we really do. Thank you so much for the call. We appreciate you, Easy the Prophet. Let's listen to another voicemail. 
Hey, fellas, long-time listener of the show here. First of all, let's take a moment to shout out, Reg. I got a boss move or soft move here for you. Uh, my name's Mike. I'm from Columbus, Ohio, by the way. My brother and I coach separate fifth-grade teams. We needed one more game to complete our schedule, so we went ahead and put each other on the schedule. There's about two minutes left. We're talking crunch time here, one or two possession game. One of his kids commits a turnover. He calls a timeout and has his team do a line drill, sprinting right in the middle of the game. I just got to ask, is this a boss move or soft move? Thanks, guys. Later. Okay. Mike's in Columbus, Ohio. He's got a fifth grade team. His brother has a fifth grade team. Fifth grade, always teaching, always learning. Crunch time. Two minutes left. One of his kids creates turnover. So he makes them do a line drill during the game. Is that a boss move or a soft move? Boss move. Soft always move. trying to get the best out soft of your move. teammates. Soft move. Always trying to get the best out of your squad. I played with. Soft move. Let me tell you something. Soft let, let move. Me, let me tell you something. No, I'm not going to listen. I'm just going to keep saying soft Let move. me tell you something, dog. Soft move. We was doing, we was doing that in college. Preach. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. They weren't stopping the game so you could do drills. He said a practice. No, they, there was a game against, you just don't listen. It was a game against his brother's team. And during the game with two minutes left, they did line drills. So all the parents had to wait. The refs got to sit there and hold the ball. They don't know what to do. It's the middle of the game, dog. Wait till the game's over. You said there's only two minutes left. Boss move. I'm all Soft about move. discipline. Yeah. So like, I'm about discipline. How so I, be disciplined and don't how ruin I the experience am, for everybody else. How I, but how my you, public Mike. persona and how I behave as a media personality is way different than I would be if I worked physically with the team. 1,000%. These are the kind of things I support. I definitely do. No. I definitely no. do. No. There's another team. There's a, there's an audience there. Did they get penalized? There's someone at the table. They get punished? There's a referee there. No. You know, you got to have respect no. for those no. around you, no. man. That's I, discipline. I, I, I'm trying to Being create a learning, learning experience right now. That you, that you don't break the rules. You can do the line drills after the game. I'm with you, Mike. Your brother made a soft move. What? I want to thank everybody for calling in. Don't forget to call in and give your cultural or regional questions. We're going to give the people what they want tomorrow. Big show on Friday. Why are we going to do another show, Reg? We're not done. 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 Give people what they want. They're my little guys. I love